Scott Berger is already one of the great rugby stories of 2014. He hasn't just returned from long-term injury, he's risen from his deathbed. Berger charges into them, taken on the 10-metre mark. His brush with bacterial meningitis was a brush with death. He's only played three games in two years, but already there are signs he's getting back to his best. Pick up by Scott Berger, try! 68 tests and 91 games of Super Rugby. He was the IRB Player of the Year in 2004, but this year is like a new beginning. Back in Australia for the first time in two years, Skulk Berger joins us on Rugby HQ. Yeah, it's great to have him on board, Skulk. Thanks very much for joining us on Fox Sports. Um, it's been a long road back for you. Did you ever have your doubts about whether you would get back? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it's been 18 months that I didn't play any, uh, uh, any rugby. But obviously at a certain stage where I was seriously ill, it was just for me to get quality of life back, you know, just to be you know, normal skulk, you know, as a social person, as a father, as a, as a family man. And then after that, obviously, you know, I got better and better. And then I thought, you know, I'm young enough. Let's give rugby a go. And here I am trying to get back into uh, some form. So mate, tell us, what, I mean, what were the symptoms? What happened? When did you notice something was really wrong? Yeah, it, it was the weirdest thing. I was training during pre-season in uh, 2012 out of here. I was, uh, a knee injury. I was out for a year and came back in 2013. And I uh, started training. My left calf started feeling a bit weird after about you know, 30 or 40 minutes of training. You know, so cramp, cramping, and I've never had issues with it before. So I went in for a scan, and they discovered that I had uh, a cyst pressing down on my uh, spinal cord, and, uh, which was obviously a big shock. And my first operation was an exploratory operation to just you know, draw some fluid out of the cyst to check what it consists of. And in that operation, I picked up a hospital bug or infection. <laughs> and uh, that infection spread straight into my spinal cord, contaminating my spinal fluid. And uh, it was a critical stage for four or five days where, uh, you know, it could have gone either way, but luckily I pulled through. Wow. Listen, where I'm um, in Australia, we're all kind of mourning the loss for the season of David Pocock, mm -hmm. who's now had two knee reconstructions. Mm -hmm. And certainly nothing doesn't have the life-threatening aspect of it, but certainly career-threatening. What would you say to a, a poet, you know, who's really contemplating whether he can do it again yeah uh, look it's it's tough you know i was obviously there and i don't think words can describe what you go through and it's uh, it's tough obviously emotionally um and physically and it's a long road back you know obviously you wish it on no rugby player it's something that's part and partial of the game but you hope you know the luck is on your side and you don't go through it so for me you know it was touch and go going either way and uh, it's a long long road back now i've been uh, fortunate to play a few games and I'm sure David's young enough and he's got a great worth ethic that he'll come back and, and be a better player than he was before. Um, look, it's not going to be easy and I, I'm sure during my, my 18 months, a lot of times you sat on the couch and you thought, you know, why are you doing this? You know, is it worthwhile? I mean, let's do something, something different. But uh, at the end of the day, we want to play rugby and I'm sure he's the same. Yeah. Hey, we'll, we'll hear from David Pocock shortly, but this is about you. Positive skulk story. 27 tackles in the last two games. I don't know if you realise that. Has the body been hurting all that much uh, after? Are you right? Look, it's felt like 50, um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been good. It's been good to be back. Obviously, you know, uh, we're batting as a team a little bit, the Stormers. Um, and, uh, we'll we talk about that. Why the slow starts? You're the slowest starting side in the Super Rugby competition at the moment. Six points in the first 20 minutes in total. We, we know. We know all about it. And uh, we've been suffering because of it. So uh, we're trying to get off to quick starts. I mean, it's part of you know, what we chat about. But we, t we tend to make a lot of errors early on. And then uh, we seem to settle as the game goes on. Um, but unfortunately for us, we've got off to poor starts. And life on the road is really hard too. I mean, you must be looking forward to perhaps um, punishing the, the Brumbies and then getting home. Oh, well, let's be honest, the, the road hasn't been too bad. Sydney's delivered some aw awesome weather. So uh, we've had a good time here. It reminds us of Cape Town. So mm. cruising up to uh, Canberra tomorrow, which is obviously a bit of a different setting. And uh, hopefully we haven't had a lot of success at the Stormers. I think maybe once or twice we've won up there. So uh, uh, hopefully we can make a number three this weekend. But the way you've been playing, I mean, there's an obvious love of the game and it looks like you're just enjoying bashing and hurting people and we've seen Jacques Potgieter as well join mm -hmm. the Waratahs in a very similar style of play. I mean, it just looks like so much fun. Oh, it is fun. I mean, obviously we grew up being quite physical in South Africa, so it's been a part of my game for a long, long time and obviously getting a bit older now, so it, it tends to hurt a bit more. So less training <laughs> and more bashing on Saturdays is the plan I'm at the moment, Kenzie. Scott, can I ask you, I don't know if you read the local papers, Stephen Larkin, coach of the Brumbies, did you read what he said about you? He called you 
You're very similar to Michael Jordan. Now, I didn't I see the... You You bring confidence in those around you. Are you uh, have you got much of Jordan in you? Well, uh, the analogy might be a little bit um, big for me. I mean, obviously, Michael Jordan... We don't look alike. <laughs> uh, but look, he's, he's probably the best baseball, uh, ba basketball player ever. So um, for me to be compared to them is obviously a bit flattering. But um, I won't say I'm, as, I'm not as good as him. Um, but I probably do have quite an effect on the, the Stormers team because I have been there for a long, long time. Hey, Talk Saturday night coming up against the Brumbies. Haven't lost the last three games. What is your analysis and uh, all your stats? Tell them about, about them. Uh, look, I mean, we all sat back in the beginning of the season in, in favourite jump out. And obviously we thought the Waratahs were going to be the Australian leaders after the first couple of weeks. And then uh, the Brumbies have come, come on song. So they make it really tough to play against and play rugby against. Uh, they've got a rush defence. So the first three phases, so they're pretty full on. And obviously at the breakdown... Uh, it's pretty well documented that they make themselves a handful. So for us, you know, we want to play territory, uh, but we also want to carry the ball in hand. So uh, it's been tough for teams to put up a lot of phases and get quality position against them. So we'll have to try, and, the try and get that. The chip kick could have worked last weekend. Yeah, it could have. Um, so we'll, uh, I wouldn't be doing any chip kicks. No, but chip uh, kick but hopefully, works. hopefully the hopefully Never works, Kenzie. I've seen the props have been practicing their grubbers. Maybe they can <laughs> sit yeah, one right. or two through. You're actually getting them at a good time. You go through the list of guys who aren't there. Uh, Scott Co, Henry Spate, Leon Powell, all missing for up to six weeks. Tavita Kurandrani's gone back to Fiji for a funeral. Um, still no Christian Liliofano. Pocock, obviously. Uh, Fotu Awalua. So they're down on personnel, you might be striking at the right time. Well, I think we need all the help we can get, so uh, maybe it's a good start for us. Well, you've got a few injuries as well. Uh, we've got heaps again, so uh, hopefully we can get off to a good start. We've been mentioning it for, for five weeks already. Your defence is awesome. We always talk about your defence the last few years. Problem scoring tries. Yeah, we're averaging like one and a half a game, aren't we? So uh, we need to pick that up. We've been trying to get the balance between attack and defence. And I think it's, it's a process, obviously, and a process we're not getting right very quickly at the moment. But uh, hopefully this weekend we can, we can turn the corner. We've got some really good attacking players. We've got a good back line. We've got some youth coming through. So there's no reason why we shouldn't mm. score tries. Uh, this weekend I think will be tough because the Brumbies are a good defensive unit. Indeed they are. Skull, thanks very much for joining us on Rugby HQ. Great to have you on board. Go well on the weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No worries. All right. Uh, love you to stay with us. We'll be catching up with Liam Gill in Johannesburg shortly. And we'll go west to check in on the resurgent Western Force. This is Rugby HQ.